Church Red, we're back again. We are getting into our next step of the Baptist faith and message, which is stewardship. And as believers tonight, what we are going to look at is this idea of being a steward or taking care of a certain thing or a certain object. A person is a steward of something that belongs to them or belongs to someone else um, that allows them to take care of it. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of technical definitions, but stewardship is not something that we as people use very often today. And so as we go through tonight's study, as we begin looking at what we would call practical application to the Christian life, we're going to look at this idea of stewardship or taking care of the things that God has given us. And we're going to look at our article tonight as we look at what does it mean for us as believers to be stewards of the things that we have been given or the things that are around us? As we get ready to read our article, as I've said over the last multiple weeks now, I'm going to post the link down below so that you can follow along with our article as well as looking at the scriptures that go along with our article so that you guys can follow along with the foundations of God's word to show us what it is that we're learning and why. As we get ready to read our article tonight, I would ask that you follow along. Uh, it'll be on the screen, as well as if you're following along online. But Article 13 says this, God is the source of all blessings, temporal and spiritual. All that we have and are, we owe to Him. Christians have a spiritual debtorship to the whole world, a holy trusteeship in the gospel, and a binding stewardship in their possessions. They are therefore under obligation to serve Him with their time, talents, and material possessions, and should recognize all these are entrusted to them to use for the glory of God and for helping others. According to the Scriptures, Christians should contribute of their means cheerfully, regularly, systematically, proportionally, and liberally for the advancement of the Redeemer's cause on earth. Our verse for tonight that leads the discussion is Matthew chapter 6, and it says, Do not collect for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But collect for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 21. We begin looking at this idea of stewardship with a definition. The stewardship is the responsibility to manage the resources that God has placed in our care. You see, we need to understand something right off the bat. We need to understand that we as believers are not in some way, shape, or form in control of or deserving of things. In fact, we have been granted a great responsibility and an incredible blessing, both spiritually through salvation, but also physically with the things that God gives us. You see, we are not, the word I would use here is deserving of or somehow entitled to things. Money, cars, clothes, homes, jobs, the nicest shoes, the, the newest t-shirts, the, the newest fads. We're not entitled to those. We are not um, in some way, shape, or form deserving of those. In fact, what we have is a blessing from God. In fact, as we go through this idea of stewardship, one of the things that we must understand is that the world around us will not see it that way. We are automatically and initially, right off the bat, going against the grain with what society tells us. The world around us tells us that the more money you can make, the better off you are. The more stuff you have, the better you are. The more popular you are, the more important you are. You see, the world around us is all about what we can get. But the New Testament reminds us several times through parables that we are to be stewards of things that do not belong to us. In fact, if you look through the New Testament and you see the parables in Matthew uh, chapter 25 and Luke chapter 12 and, and chapter 16, 
we see that God gives examples of people being given money and, and meaningful things to be stewards of and to take care of. And we have to understand that as we look through tonight's article, we are being asked to be a steward of something. And the first line that we see in the article is a reminder that God is the source of all things. You see, it uses the term blessing, but ultimately it means God is the one who gives, period. The things that we have, the money, the job, the, the clothing, the home, the car, everything is a blessing of God. It was created by Him. It was put into place by Him. It was made for His glory in the days of creation. And as we as people grow and advance and go through all of these things, we don't wear clothes the same that were made thousands of years ago. But ultimately, everything that is and is used in this world today was given by God. We also see that the spiritual blessing of salvation and faith in Christ and the peace that brings uh, to all of our lives that surpasses understanding, the things that God does for us spiritually as well as physically are all things given by God. That's the first thing we need to see. And then we understand that who we are as people and what belongs, I use the quotations very carefully here, what belongs to us is given to God. It's what we owe Him. You see, without Him, we would have nothing. And ultimately, for those who think they have gathered all that they possibly can in their lifetime, when they pass away, will come face to face with God for their judgment day and realize that they have nothing. So we understand first and foremost that we are stewards of what God has given us. It is something we must very, very carefully understand. The first part that our study talks about here is understanding that we have a, a holy trusteeship or that we are a part of something holy as believers that we must first understand. The first thing we understand is that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it reminds us that we are bought with a price. This price is we belong to God. We are now slaves to Him instead of sin. You see, the Christian worldview begins to detach us from all of this monetary, simple money, job, power, positional stuff here on earth. And helps us understand that we are a part of something much bigger and outside of that. You see, Christians understand that the things that we have here on earth are enjoyable and can be enjoyed. But ultimately, they are not what is important. If we go back to Matthew that we read here at the beginning, it reminds us not to treasure the things on earth, but instead treasure the things that are in heaven. God's kingdom, God's will, God's glory and honor. So that when that time comes where Christ returns, we are glorified with Him. The money and the power and the cars and all that stuff goes away, but God does not. See, we must understand that we as Christians have been saved by grace through faith in Christ to a higher calling than to make money or to be rich or to be popular or to be powerful. We are called to be followers of Christ and to work so that all may hear the gospel and to further God's kingdom. You see, Christians must be reminded that a love for the world is not what we are called to. It is instead the most important thing in our lives is the gospel, that Christ died for us so that we might be saved from sin. You see, I don't want to say here that it's impossible to have money and be a Christian because I don't think that's true. I don't think that the amount of money that a person has defines whether or not they can be a Christian. I don't think that God is telling us that we need to waller in filth and, and not have any money at all. What I do think that Jesus is reminding us here in Matthew chapter 6 is 
we cannot serve wealth and God. We cannot serve things and God. That's what we are needing to be reminded of as believers when we say we are part of a holy trusteeship or that we are a, um, a, a debtor to God. We have been saved by grace so that we may serve Him and share the gospel. Then we get into the rest of this, this article that reminds us several different things. Number one, that God is in control and gives these blessings to us. The second thing that it reminds us of is that we are a, a, a part of the gospel and what we are called to do is to share that gospel and that we are to, to give everything that we can to make sure that God's kingdom is spread and glorified. The next thing that we see is that the things that God gives us needs to be used for His glory and His honor. Our article reminds us that we are to use our time, talent, and Benjamin will use the phrase treasures, time, talent, and treasures to serve God and to further His kingdom. You see, as we understand that God doesn't just want us to be nothing, we cannot serve God and ourself as we make money and earn more money and try to make more money and do all of these things. We can't serve two masters. A mature Christian understands that material possessions is not the important thing. The important thing is the future in heaven with God forever. The gospel of salvation spread across the world so that people can hear about the saving grace of Christ. We see that Christians are not under this screw of of slavery or this thumb of slavery. Instead, it's, it's more of a response of love. It's not an obligation of, well, now I'm a Christian, I have to do all these things. Instead, it is a, it's a rejoicing. It is a response of love for what God has done for us, that He has given us a certain talent, or maybe He has given us money that we have in our possessions that we can share with others so that they don't need things. That we can care for each other, that we can encourage each other, that we can further God's kingdom. You know, there are people out there that that have financial ability that I don't or that maybe you don't. But there are some people that are physically and and, uh, monetarily or money wise able to do things that certain people can't. It doesn't make them more important or less important. It just means that God has given them a treasure that they can use for God's kingdom. Some of us have talents like music or singing leadership, teaching, maybe it's service or hospitality, maybe it's organization or management. There are talents that God gives you at your salvation and in your life that you can use to further God's kingdom. And all of us have time, whether we want to admit it or not, we all have time where we can serve others or we can serve in our church, in our church body. Our article says that we are to be generous, that we are to be um, loving, and this is a way for us to worship and honor God and what He has done in our life. The next thing that we're going to look at is tithing. Again, I remind us that Christian stewardship is not an obligation It is a joyful sense of privilege or response to what God has done for us. And so as we talk about tithing, this may be something that you guys have or maybe have not heard about very much in the Christian life. In fact, I think sometimes people kind of avoid the subject of tithing because it's kind of a taboo thing sometimes. Like people don't really want to talk about giving money away. Some people do it maybe begrudgingly. Some people do it because they're supposed to. Some people do it because they want to. Some people don't want to talk about it. Pastors sometimes struggle with preaching messages about giving to the church because we feel selfish. 
But ultimately, when we look at Scripture, what we see is God calling the believer to give back to the kingdom of God. The tithe in the Old Testament is referred to as a tenth or 10% of their overall goods or livelihood, our income, so to speak. And as we look at these ideas of the Old Testament, people might say, well, I'm a Christian and I'm under the New Testament now, so I don't have to do those things. Well, let me counter with this. You're right. Maybe we don't need to sit by the 10%, but maybe we should be doing more. You see, somebody who says, well, I'm not under the old law, I'm under the new law, needs to remember that Christ calls us to be transformed and to live at a level that is honoring and glorifying to God. And then when I go back to our article, it reminds us that we are to give cheerfully, regularly, systematically, proportionately, there's the 10%, but also liberally. We are called to glorify God, and when you have more, you give more. Maybe it's giving more money to the church and your tithe. Maybe it's giving to a missionary group that is in need. Maybe it is giving to a certain program in the church. Maybe it's helping remodel different things within the church building. Maybe it is making sure that another member has what they need in a time of difficulty where you might be able to provide the money to do something in their life to support them in their struggles. You see, Dave Ramsey is a financial advisor that has a program for teens and adults. Some people may or may not agree with all of the things that he says, but one of the things that he refers to is God calls Christians to not be in debt. And the reason that he gives for that is is several different parts of the Bible that he pulls into a lot of his his conversation about money, but ultimately his statement is Christians should get out of debt so that they can give more to the kingdom and the ministries of God. Can you imagine if a Christian who's making $4,000 a month or even $2,000 a month has no bills, very little bills that they have to pay every month, how much more they could do with their money to to provide for their families and to provide for the church members and to, to give to ministries that are in need. You see, we as believers are called to be stewards of God's blessings. We are to take care of the things that God has given us both physically and spiritually. I go back to our definition that says it's a responsibility to manage the resources that God has placed in our care. We are under not an obligation, but we are under a joyful response to the privilege and the blessing that God has given to us. Today we close with this. If you're watching today and you're a teenager who doesn't make a lot of money, this may not mean a lot to you. But just because you're not making a lot of money does not mean that you do not have a talent or time or treasures to give to the church body, to your fellow believers, and to God Himself. If you're an adult watching this program tonight and you have young people that are in youth group, whether in my church or another church, and you're not teaching them what it means to love the church and to give of their time and talent and treasure, then we are missing the mark. If you are watching this tonight, no matter whether you're young or old, whether you're middle-aged or working a full-time job or just mowing lawns on the weekends, we have things that we can give to God to further His kingdom and to glorify His will and His way and not our own. And as we look at this idea of stewardship, that is what we are called to do. In just a minute, we're going to close in prayer as we go on to the next article next week. As we look at this idea of cooperation, and we are going to continue going through our articles. We have about five left. And after we finish these articles, we hope to be back in session on our youth group activities and studies. And we will then continue these videos as an additional resource for you guys 
each week. I hope to be able to announce in the next couple weeks what study we will be going into, and we will be looking at different things that we can apply to our lives each and every week as we grow as believers, as we grow as Christians together. So if you would, I hope that you will stay tuned. I hope that you'll be watching our Facebook page from uh, FBC Kabul as well as our website because we will be posting some information soon as we start preparing for registration for our Tread Youth, when all of that will begin, our new hours and our new plans for the year, and I hope that you are ready to get back. If you have been missing our time together, so have I. And I hope that you guys are ready to rejoin and to begin again studying God's Word as we go through the Gospel Project. Tonight, I would hope that you bow with me, pray through the things that God has given you to use for His kingdom, and join me next week as we continue to study cooperation in the Baptist faith and message. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight as we, we study your word and we see that you call us to be a steward of the things that you have given us, that we have been blessed beyond belief with things both physically and spiritually that did not belong to us, that we did not deserve. Lord, if we are honest with ourselves tonight, it doesn't matter what we have, it doesn't matter how little or how much, it does not belong to us. We have been blessed by you so that we may take what you have given and use it for your kingdom. Lord, as I pray tonight that these young people and these adults that may be watching this program would understand that we have been blessed with time, talent, and yes, money and treasure that we may use it in your name. We pray for wisdom with that responsibility. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Again, I hope to see you next time on our next step in cooperation with the Baptist Faith and Message. Have a great week and stay tuned for all of the new information coming. Mm -hmm.